Bro, I swear to God, this mode is actually good if you know what you're doing, okay? I don't know how anyone can take one but track him there, there. It's opinion seriously. Let's not make this another steel hunter where they nerf it because you cry about it. This will be a three part series, by the way. Alright, so today I'm gonna to show you how to win as the strategist one versus one. Uh basically your squad should consist of, you can choose whatever you want, but I recommend the gun turret and the MRL simply because, you know, one flamethrower and one MG turret, it's just not enough. And two anti-tank guns, I mean, they're, they could be useful on certain maps, but I feel like they're very limited and they die very easily. You definitely want a watchtower. Okay, you get three of them, and it basically means no one can ever surprise you when making a play. Now, for tanks, I'm not going to tell you you need this exact lineup, because this lineup is just how I like it. Um, but basically, what I do recommend is Kron. The fact that you're a very fast autoloader, and your gun depression turret armor means you can hold some very key positions with this tank. I also recommend the VZ-55 because it's just a solid all-around tank. Um, I've got a 60 TP for some health, E4 for, you know, big gun, big damage, whatever. STB-1 because everything else is bad. Fosh B, I personally like it. It's very good at clipping things and TVP as, uh, as well. It's very good at clipping things, so. But mainly, bring a Kron and probably bring a VZ because th those are good tanks to bring. In my opinion, you should set everything to hold because bots are very good at losing all their HP. It's better for you to put them in safe positions and you uh, manually use them. You manually, like you go into them and fire them yourself. Uh, except in certain situations where you would want them to move on their own. But usually for the beginning, I leave them on hold. All right, now I'm going to show you how to win on certain maps. So... If you spawn on this side, it's very, very easy to rush this position and kill everything and win the game. It's very easy to anti-camp, basically. You get your mediums up here. You get some heavies over here. And it's pretty much it, really. So, I'll, uh, let's do this. I'll speed it up. Alright, let's go. Except, funny enough... The, this person is doing the age-old classic trick of um, just trying to rush the cap circle. It doesn't work. I've got watchtowers to let me know exactly what you're going to do. So I see this. Like, oh, you're going to rush my base, huh? Okay. I will send almost my entire force to your cap circle, and I'll send just a few guys, two guys back to reset you. Because it doesn't matter how many people are in the cap circle. One person in the cap circle is enough. I sent three to, you know, clear out whatever's here. So, you know, I send the Fosh B back because that's basically the ultimate cap resetter. You ready? Watch this. Okay, three of you in the cap circle. All right. Reset you. Reset you. And reset you. And there you go, that's your whole fucking capture done. Gone. Did it work out for you? Did your little rush work out? It didn't. Stop trying to rush people's cap circles. It rarely works when the person knows what they're doing. You know, this guy does this every game. And it must work considering he always does it. He literally just W keys across the field. And I get it, he, this map is pretty campy. But, um, like, YOLOing cap circles, if the person knows what they're doing, just doesn't work. <clears throat> you know, it would have been smart if he sent maybe two people in the cap circle and the rest to fight off my my guys over here. But in reality, what happens is, like, I just defend. You know, I got a freaking Fosh B here. And I just go send my, my bat chat to cap you out. And in fact, I didn't even need to cap out. So the point is, rushing people's cap circles, although it's, a, I get it, you you don't want to camp, but it if the person knows what they're doing, it's not going to work. Get into position, oh look, 
another moronic like yolo oh oh check this out he's like oh i'm gonna get i'm gonna get these guys right yeah you yeah i guess you will i've already got a bat chat headed straight for your base your whole team is out of position here the cavalry is about to arrive <laughs> uh, i've got a fosh b here so that pretty much says you can't do anything and then i just send my bat chat he's got a flamethrower in his cap circle it doesn't matter I have all the time to do whatever. He's got a few tanks left. They're all here. I decide, all right, I'm going to aid my homie in uh, capturing the base. So I'm going to send my shits to the middle. So, you know, he sent his little shit rush cam cap, right? He was like, oh crap, it didn't work. Okay, well, dump, dump on these guys. They got to kill two tanks with all their force. <laughs> One of them slips right to their base. And he actually sends the rest back, which is interesting. So basically, just to win this is you just surround him, right? Got some people here, got some people here, and then eventually, eventually, he just uh, he gets his his shit rocked in. So yeah, there you go. If you want to lose, just uh, YOLO. So he's not going to the hill. What is he doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So having a Fosh B uh, basically means that you can't win <laughs> by capping. I mean, these guys are dying before they even reach the cap circle. Interestingly enough, I sent my STB-1 to cap and he died. I guess he just <laughs> got farmed by the fucking flamethrower, but point is, rushing cap circles doesn't work if the person knows what they're doing. I mean, look at this. The bat chat's on the hill, got a TVP over here, got a Fosh B, a, a whole bunch of fuckers here. I mean, let, let's say, you know, there's a whole bunch of dead wrecks and somebody hides behind the dead wrecks. Well, I've got a TVP. I've got a bat chat to just YOLO you. Hell, I've even got this bad boy over here. So, you know, <laughs> feel free. Go go rush cap circles. It'll be the fastest, easiest win for me and for a lot of people that are now watching this video. To break a camp on airfield, you really want to just rush uh, the opponents before they have a chance to get into their positions. So as you can see here, I'm putting all my fast mediums to their side of the hill. And then I put the cron here because it'll go hull down and shoot them uh, before they have a chance to even make it up. And, uh, you know, Foshby, of course, will come here, get the early damage. He'll be more of a sacrifice. The point is that he can clip somebody out pretty much instantly. And the rest of the heavies can just play around these corners. So, if we just speed up the replay. So now, they're in a crossfire. They want to shoot my mediums, uh, but they're also getting shot by these heavies and all these other people. Uh, unfortunately, this you know strategy isn't perfect. Uh, the heavies maybe could be a bit faster to get into position. So as you can see, um, I was kind of focused on the fight here. I didn't realize their light tank was just shooting my friends in the ass. So... I mean, that's one way you could try and preserve your camp, but... Um, normally on this map, it really is just a 15-minute draw. So, the fact that there's fighting is enough for me. But, uh, if we speed up... Um, so, of course, I've lost a lot of HP doing this. And, um... Eventually... We clear this out, or I clear this out. But um, after this, it's kind of ha like hard to do anything because, well, that thing is shooting my my team, and he's got mediums over here, right? I'm in a one versus three, but of course I never lose, so I mean I'm just gonna tell you what happens. I should show you quickly. Outplayed, outplayed. He gets outplayed there. There you go, he's dead. And now the his T100. Like 
speed it up. I mean, this is a very long and drawn out game where this, this guy is, you know, the average World Tanks player is just so shit that they can't handle anything other than shit camping. So this guy is doing everything he can to just waste time, I guess. And, um, so, you know, I outsmart him here. And this shot is gonna bite me in the ass later, because... Right? Armor not penetrated. Okay, it wasn't even an armor not hit, it just straight up didn't pen. So, that's nice. So now I gotta deal with this uh, shithead driving around. But I decide, uh, you know what, fine, fuck you, I'm gonna go to my cap. If Because he's not capping me. Uh, but, uh, so a little, uh, you know, just my sh sheer anger and annoyed came into the form of a snapshot. Yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, eat shit. And eat fucking shit. <laughs> so after that, I'm like, okay, this guy is like, you know, he's probably got some severe brain damage. If I sit in the cap, he probably won't even come back. So, there's two minutes of the game left. I sit in the cap. Here we go. I see shit's getting knocked over, and uh, there he is. He actually did come back. Well, fuck you, okay? He took so goddamn long. You deserve this loss. Uh, that's one way to break a camp. It's much harder to break a camp on this side. Um, going over here is way easier to break the camp. I don't know why. Like, if you're here, you don't... I don't know. You just get shot less. Um, you can play here. And if this shoots you, they get spotted. Whereas on the other side, it doesn't. But I don't know why, but if you have this side... Uh, and you're playing. Uh, push all your your fast tanks over here and disperse your heavy tanks around here, and you might you'll probably win. Let's speed this up. Yep, it's the classic just shitlord camping. They just come here to sit, and their mediums go to the middle. Though it does seem that I was not paying very much attention. Uh, these guys in the middle get shot from over here. And then they die, if I remember correctly. Though I don't care, because at least... Uh, at least it's not camping, because I'm just so goddamn tired of camping on airfield. Alright, so... It's a half health progetto and a... 3 quarters health, 60 TP, versus the rest of them. Uh, can we win? Or can I win? Well, of course I can win. I haven't lost the game. I remember. There you go. But the thing is, even if I lost, it literally does not matter. Because, like, this game was 5 minutes, instead of the 15 minutes of sitting. So... I mean, if you if you want to break a camp, this is how you do it. I can't guarantee you'll win, um, but that's how you break a camp from this side. Here's another replay, just one more. I'm gonna speed it up a lot. You know, you send all your your tanks roughly like this. They're in a crossfire. Come on, buddy, come on. Wow. Wow, that was literally a pixel with 15 seconds left. Because I never lose, remember? But, uh, man, these shitters, they really just want to camp. It's so fucking boring. Anyway, I'm going to show you it from the other side now. So here's the anti-camp. He sent his mediums over there. My bat chat went in. He clipped someone out but died. It's fine. So, you know, these guys are in a crossfire right now. Not very smart. And now they're getting flanked. Thanks to the anti-camp. So, I mean, it, it, <laughs> it speaks for itself, doesn't it?
There you go. Airfield anti-camp. You just rush in. You send your mediums here. Um, this is the first time I tried this. I would send two mediums here. Just to either have an equal fight or an overmatch. Because, you know, what's the chance that somebody sends three people here? But other than that, you, you just rush in. And, you know, people who play World of Tanks are usually very slow in the head. Done. Easy airfield anti-camp. Alright, so you win mines, literally, by rushing the hill. That's it. Look, I've sent my whole damn team to the hill. But then I decided, uh, they, they're they pretty light, so they will probably go hill. So I send my heavies to the mid, hold the mid. My Fosh B is in the corner, he'll clip anybody out, and the rest to the hill. I'm going to tell you a pro tip, by the way. To reach the hill first, every time. So, as you can see, they have a 50B and a TVP. Uh, those those are pretty fast. Uh, I have a TVP and a uh, bat chat. So, how come I made it to the hill first? Well, I'm manually piloting the bat chat. As you can see, the bat chat, there is no health bar, whereas all the other tanks do. That means I'm I'm piloting him right now. I'm, I'm driving for him. Because the way the bots work, when they follow the path, it's weird. I don't know why, but they have to follow it almost exactly. So like if you if they go around the corner they like stop turn stop and then they inch away and then they go, whereas this this requires you to go as fast as you can. So watch as soon as my bat chat gets to the hill, right here. I switch to my TVP, and then I force him to go up, and then the rest can go up as they please. But now that I have the hill, and my heavy tanks are soon to come to the middle part. They're just going to be in a crossfire, and they're just going to die. In fact, I forgot about my STB-1. He does. I don't even need him. The fact that I have two people here, and a whole bunch of heavies here, means that they're in a crossfire. They have to turn their turrets. I mean, this version 4 is, is aiming at my TVP, giving his broad side to everybody. And you'll see. They're, the fact that they're in a crossfire means that the game is lost before it even started. In fact, I send my homies up to get more of a crossfire. And there you go. In fact, his STB-1 was over here the whole time. I don't know why. It's not very useful when the hill is everything. But, uh, oh well. Anyway, so at the end of this, here he is. I don't know why he doesn't just give up. He's just wasting time at this point. So I decide, alright, fine. I'll send my STB-1 to go cap. Because I'm not going to chase this guy around the whole map. But, uh, you know, he goes there. I don't know, he's trying to cap or something. And he just dies. So, to win mines. You go to the hill. You send everything to the hill. If they have people going to the hill, your mediums go up, your heavy stay low. And that's how you win. All right, so now from the other side. S again, it's the same shit as before. You send all your mediums to the hill immediately, and all your heavies also to the hill. If they have people also taking the hill, your heavies stay right here, right? Grind them out while your mediums are here, putting them in a crossfire. Of course, I am currently piloting the TVP myself. To ensure that he gets there as soon as possible. There you go. I'm here before him. He's getting clipped out. My bat chat's about to load. Now he's in a crossfire, so he's aiming at my heavies. Um, I actually do send my heavies up here. That's weird. I guess I, de I decided that a Fosh B and a 60 TP down low was enough. So I got all my shits here and all my shits here. If they try to push my 60 TP, they're going to eat it. They're in a crossfire. They do try to push my 60 TP. Uh, my Fosh B dies. It doesn't matter. They're, you know, they're in a crossfire, right? I have the hill... While the, you know, while the, his bots were, you know, taking care of my Fosh B, 
My whole damn team was grinding them up. And that's how you win. You, you have to take the hill. This guy took the hill, but he has very slow tanks, so he never actually be, was able to take the hill himself. You know, like, a T-62A and a 430U and an E-50M, they're not as fast as a TVP and a Bat Chat, and those have tank those tanks have clips. Alright, Ghost Town is probably the easiest map to win. Uh, and it's not because I'm fighting a vet, but... First of all, of course, watchtowers. Absolutely necessary. This is where I'm putting all my tanks. Um, this is actually... You could probably copy this strat. Like, I don't recommend copying my lineup, or my strats, or anything, but... Remember, Kronvon... He's going to go over here, next to this watchtower. Anything gets lit, he shoots them. If my Kron gets YOLO'd, you know, first he'll empty a clip into someone. My TVP will finish him off back there, as you can see. Uh, it says 60 TP, it shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> what? It should be a TVP back here. Um, my heavies will go to the city, of course. Right up to this corner, and grind out their heavies. Their STB will go to this little mound right here. So if they ever decide to cross or YOLO, he's got a nice little hull down. Now, they don't have a light. They don't have watchtowers. What does this mean? It means I immediately send my Fosh B to here and my Bat Chat to scout. He just decided to move his tanks here and sit. So there I go, my Bat Chat's in position and my Fosh B is uh, just going to... Nuke him, basically. Unfortunately, I missed like half my shots, but... Um, so... I'm not really sure what this play is. However, the point is, my heavies are here. You know, all my sides are covered. I see that these three are going like that, so obviously, I align them in a way that'll provide a crossfire. So my Fosh B, there you go. Let's see. So that's a Fosh B just deleted one of them. Uh, my Bat Chat, now, you know, they didn't even know I was here. And this mouse is just getting shit on from every side. And then this guy decided, oh right, now we push the city that they're distracted. However, S to be one here, saw it coming. Homie over here and here. In fact, this guy has shots the way he is, but you could also move him up here. So basically, like, all sides are covered. There you go, TVP just killed him. So what can you take away from this? Okay, first of all, don't make a shit play. But second of all, position your tanks so that every tank can support every tank. You know, within reason. Like, this Fosh B is not going to help this Kron, but... You know, this Fosh B will support my heavies in the city. My heavies in the city are supported by this STB, who's being supported by this TVP, and, you know... If they were there, it would be supported by my Kron as well. So, that's what you have to do when lining up your tanks, is find a way that they could all support each other. That way, like, if, even, like, check this out, like, these tanks, the 60TP and the VZ, they were, they were in the midst of this whole YOLO push, and they're still alive. In fact, everything's still alive, because they were being supported from every angle. Micron didn't do anything this whole game. Like, I could have easily just said, alright, go straight to the base. Now, looking at this, you know, there's two of them left. Everybody go straight for the cap. I don't care. They're probably going to be camping at the back. So That's also a weird thing, by the way. Why would you do a weird a push like that and have people camping at the back? I suppose he wants them to reset the cap, but I don't know. Anyway... I mean, this Leopard only has so much DPM, right? Eventually, he's just going to get overrun. This guy gets overrun. And yeah. Alright, so here's a here's an interesting one. So, this is uh, basically showing how you can't camp on this map. A ghost town. Uh, it's very easy to break camps. I'll show you how. So, 
Fosh B, of course, in the TD position in case he spots anything or the Watchtower spot anything and he clips him out. Because, you know, if an, if an STB1 is scouting, for example, I don't want a Leopard here. He's not going to kill him before he gets unlit. The Fosh B will. However, I've decided to not put the Fosh B here because they have Watchtowers and they don't have any lights. So I doubt anybody would be going to the middle. Instead, I position my Foshby in a way that can support the city. Somebody got lit. Not the Kron. My Kron got lit. Which suggests to me, because this guy has watchtowers, right? That he's got a watchtower here. So you could tell this guy really wants to camp. Because he's brought a decent amount of heavies, but mainly he's brought watchtowers. And he's, uh, you know, he hasn't been lit yet. But anyway, got the classic TVPs here. I decide, as soon as nothing gets spotted over here or anything over here. I know he's camping. He's not going to push the city. I'm bringing my bat chat over here because to break a camp on ghost town, you push the one line. If you're on this side, what you do is you push the one line straight to this corner. And from the other side, you push the one line straight to this dip and then to this corner. Either way, it's very easy to break a camp on this map. So I got my homies here, spots an STB1, I've moved up my Kron to get better eyes. City's still being holed because of course the city needs all the support it can get because if I get YOLO in the city, um, now that these guys are going to be occupied, nothing can support them, right? So I want a decent amount of people here. I decide to push my heavies forward first. I want to know if anybody was in the city before I made my YOLO push here. Because if you push this, and you stop here, you're going to get shot from their side of the city. So I've, now I see that, okay, they're not here. I can afford to move up. So let's do that. Go like this. I send them in. I have three versus two. And I have auto loaders. My Kron's reloading. This guy thinks, uh, oh, he's reloading. Let's get him. All right, here are my mediums with their auto loaders. In fact, he wasn't even micro. He wasn't even managing this uh, <laughs> this leopard. He, it was a three v three, and he still lost. And I didn't take a single casualty. So that's a uh, good job, buddy. Now I um, I tell I force these guys to just go in. Like, a, it's no use getting farmed from up there. So these guys go in. And then they have to make it to here. I, I, get, sh I get killed by a gun turret, which is interesting. A gun turret, that's what it says. I don't even know. Is that this? Because that thing definitely did not kill me. But I died here. Anyway, whatever. It might be a bug. Now that I've reached this part of the map, uh, it's basically game over for them. Because now I can I can sort of YOLO through their cap circle, and these guys are in a crossfire. But let's say um, I, I took more casualties and I don't want to YOLO across. Well, I got a Kron and a Bat Chat here. Guess where I'm going to put the Kron? Well, right here. It's the easiest way to win. I position, alright, before that push, I position these tanks in a way that can support me. So this Fosh B and this STB won't shoot the hill. Bat Chat's going to support the Kron. The Kron's going to go here. There you go. He's like, oh, he's reloading. I'm going to YOLO him now. Bat Chat's coming in for the, to the rescue. And I'm just grinding them out. Turns out the rest of his tanks are here. Actually, two of them here, and then one are over here. Just, you know, hard shit camping. This, uh, you know, I don't know what this guy's trying to do, man. I decide, alright, we have a huge overmatch. Let's go get this IS-7. I-7 turns around, because he can't Pentacron turret. Then I send... Everybody else to where I think the Badger is, because, well, where else is he going to be, right? So, meanwhile, homies camping, capping out. 
So let's let's have a quick look, all right? This guy sent all his heavies here, his badger there, and his mediums here. The fact that I YOLO'd through here, all the way to this corner, ensures that at least a few people will make it. And, you know, once I'm here, and I got a Kron that's about to go hull down here, you lose. So that's how you break a camp on Ghost Town. It really is easy. Alright, here's a situation that just plays out normally. Uh, no shit camps, no bad plays. Foshby goes here. He has a light tank. I have watchtowers. His light tank goes here and gets lit. My Foshby will clip him out. Send my... This time I have a Progetto instead of an STB-1 because I like autoloaders. Uh, here we go. I got my homies over here waiting around the corner. So unfortunately... <laughs> When you're playing on this map, it really is just pixel sniping this corner. That's how it's going to be. So like this guy gets lit. I, I go into this guy. So there you go. Can I see his Coppola? Kind of. There we go. And now when this guy's reloading, I switch to the 60 TP. Because his bot's probably set the hold. It has no idea what's going on. Of course, World of Tanks says no. So then I switch back to my VZ. By the time, uh, you know, now it's reloaded. And this is, like, perfect synergy. Just going back and forth, right? Now, uh... Now my 60 TP's loaded. I go like this. Breaks my gun. Doesn't matter. So this guy's lost... A bunch of his health just because I have this this combo right here where I switch between them and cover each other's reloads so this guy's just lost a whole bunch of health right there from the start Kron here of course gets YOLO'd uh, TVP will, will help him out now I decide all right if they're not going to push this side I will push this side with my Kron my PVP and bat chat just like last time I got homies in the city, they'll be fine. And uh, let's just speed it up. So this is interesting. They actually decided to push this way. So this is a bad situation for me. My tanks are in a crossfire, front and side. What do I do? Well, get rid of the crossfire. Focus on killing this guy. I'm no longer in a crossfire. I could put all my tanks over here, they get unlit, and, they, and then they shoot through the bush. In fact, <clears throat> I was so confident I didn't even bother bringing anybody back. So now these homies are unlit. I set my bat chat. Okay, bat chat, you go scout. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so one of them gets away. Now let's pause it. Alright, let's look at their health. They lost that much health. And I've lost basically none. Because I did not allow myself to get in a crossfire. I didn't even bother moving these guys. They didn't need to move. Now that I know that pretty much everything has been lit except the badger. Who is here, funny enough. I now know that this is basically free reign. So everything's been lit now. In fact, these guys could probably not even be here. And it, it would still be an easy win. So yeah, anyway. Here you go. Let's speed this up. I don't know why he sent his badger here. My Fosh B is here. My Fosh B will absolutely nuke him. His light tank is... I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Gets sniped by the gun turret. And uh, yeah, there you go. That was an easy win. Hold this. He made a bad play, pushing like this, because I had homies over here, and then I went in, and yeah, there you go. How could he have won this? Well, he doesn't have a Kron. That's the problem, really. If he had a Kron here, and I did my little push, and YOLO'd, and he had a homie here, 
I would be in a bad situation getting crossfired, right? I might win because it's three on two, but if he focuses my Kron and all I have left is a bat chat or a TVP, that's going to make winning this very difficult without a Kron. So, unfortunately, he just didn't have the, he didn't have the right lineup. It's as simple as that. Alright, so as much as I say I hate camping, unfortunately, the best way to play steps is to initially put yourself in a defensive position and put your heavies in a defensive position just to see what's going on. You know, are, are they pushing this side? Uh, are they going to push this side? Are they going to push the middle? You don't know. Uh, also, this is why you, you never use a light tank in this mode and just use watchtowers. I mean, this light tank just got lit by this tower uh, and he can't even see it either. You know, it's interesting. I guess he understands that the watchtower is powerful. That's why he's YOLO'd his tank to destroy all these, right? It does him no good. So he he's going around. He killed all my watchtowers. Then I decide, okay, fine. I'm going to move my heavy tanks up here because there's nobody here. I'm going to use move my medium tanks over here. And... Guess what he's doing. This This loser... You know, probably has no friends in real life. He he started this battle, and then he's like, I know what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send everybody to this corner, and then everybody to this corner, and I'm going to sit for 15 minutes. Okay. Jesus. Why? It didn't work, buddy. So he sent all his shits here <clears throat> to camp. And it didn't work because once my mediums killed the one Kron that was here, I just sent them over and we had him in a crossfire. So, like, for the love of God, stop fucking camping. Alright, so here's another game on steps. Uh, you know, a normal game, not where one YOLOs. But instead, camps. So that's a normal game on, on steps. Put my Fosh B here. I don't know, it just seems like the logical place to put them. Put my mediums here, ready to either run or, because, you know, the watchtower. It'll spot anybody who's doing, like, a super YOLO rush. So, if that's the case, I send all my mediums back into this dip. My heavies go and grind this corner out. And uh, that's pretty much how it is, really. Just speed it up. So this guy comes in. He's doing his little scout run. Here's my Fosh B. He gets one of my towers. I got my bat chat here. He gets lit. Yeah. Wasn't exactly the smartest move, but my bat chat gets lit. And when you set something to scout and they get lit, they just sit, which I find odd. But so I have to manually take control and get them out of there. Uh, if you notice, I knocked down the trees so my bat chat can scout easier. Um, so yeah, he just lost his light, which means he's just gonna, he's really gonna shit camp. And, unfortunately, he spotted my tower, or my gun turret, and I did not spot his. So my gun turret is gonna keep losing health. So, if I just sit here, I'm bleeding. So let's speed it up. Eventually I get bored. I say, okay, you're not gonna YOLO me, so I can make a play. <laughs> Interestingly enough, he has people here, which is fine because I sent my bat chat here to, to uh, scout them out, right? Also, this is why you don't bring anything like a flamethrower or whatever on this mode, because you might get lucky and it might kill a bot, but in reality, you only have one, uh, and that one would just get singled out. But yeah, anyway, here we go. I'm going to try and clip that bad boy out. I decide, okay, it's two people there, I can move move these guys in. Unfortunately, first of all, okay, I don't know what this is, but trying to push on this side is really hard because, you know, you got hull down people here, right, on this ledge, and like, let's say there's a badger here, and he's double bushed, right? I'm screwed. So, pushing this side is quite difficult, I don't usually try it unless I know where everything is. There you go. Once this uh, once this guy dies, I move everything up here. So actually, okay, 
Their badger was just lit here. Now I'm going to push this side. Look at their team. Everything's lit except the 113 and a scent. Those are, those are pussy tanks. My forces, my tanks here, they can absolutely nuke them. And this guy gets nuked. Pushing them through. Now I'm dispersing them between these rocks. Because uh, I don't know. I, I, If their scent's not lit, it's safe to assume that he's here. And turns out he is. So instead of YOLOing across the field like this and getting into a crossfire, YOLO through these rocks so at least there's cover. I go up, just like that. Now, Badger was lit. He's lit shooting my homies over there. Right? What does that mean for my mediums? So Foshby, of course, comes in, nukes everything it sees. Two autoloaders nukes that. Badger gets nuked. Now, this is an interesting situation. His scent is full health, and I got a lot of people that aren't full health, but, you know, just sheer numbers means that he's going to lose. So go like that. He kills a few of my tanks, and done. So that's how you break a camp, because that was a camp, right? He sent... I don't know, he sent, like, heavies here. He sent some people here, I guess. Not enough. And he had one guy sniping in the back. I started off by not necessarily camping, but trying to gather information. His light tank died. Alright, let's uh, let's go like this. Uh, you know, try to grind this out. His badger gets spotted there. Oh shit, his badger's not here. Well then, that leaves only two people. 3v2, that's an easy win. There we go. And, you know, once you get the homies to here, and homies to here, this side just dies. Now, unfortunately for you, if he has a whole bunch of TDs here, and, and sniping, and he has, I don't know, a, a badger or a yag or whatever, double bushed here, and some homies here, this map is unwinnable. It's a draw. It's literally a draw. It sucks ass. If they do that, then your best bet is to sort of just make it to this position here. Right here, it's this little dip. And try and spot them and grind them out. Maybe go here. But again, if they've got homies over here, you're not winning. It's going to be a draw. Here we go. Watchtowers are exceptionally useful for this map. Notice how I put all of them in the field. Um... That light tank is kind of screwed. He has no chance. They don't have watchtowers, so that's good for me. The way I do it from this side is I send some heavies to this corner initially, and maybe one over here. My mediums hide behind this building. If uh, you know they're awaiting uh, an ambush, if they decide they want to push through, then my mediums spring into action. But since they have a light, I'm not going to be pushing the field. My bat check can sit here. It, you know, he's just sort of like, you know, on the on the ready. If anything needs, if anything happens, I can move him quickly. My Foshby goes here, of course, because when my watchtower spot his light, he will get clipped out. So let's speed it up. So interestingly enough, my Kron actually made it and is now clipping out this guy. So that's an easy, you know, however many damage. But uh, hey, go. You can pen an S Kong through the turret ring uh, with APCR. And if you have heat, you could just shoot the Coppola. And I'm doing that classic strategy where I alternate back and forth. But I didn't need to. My, my gun, you know, took care of him. So now I've decided, okay, his light tank hasn't been lit yet. That kind of suggests to me that his light tank's probably in a bush somewhere, because, you know, either he's yodeling up and gets lit and dies, or he's camping at the back. So, this is the main way to win uh, Siegfried line. That's what this is, right? Yeah. Uh, you basically, you send your homies down this line, and you clear it out until you get to this corner. Because if they're camping, and you get to here, uh, it's going to be very good for you. Alright, so this T-100 was actually here the whole time. But, uh, here we go. I moved my Kron up. Because now that I've recognized that, you know, he's not just YOLOing or passive scouting. He's 
playing at least sort of sensibly, it'd be very useful to have another person to support me. So here's this Kron. He's going to be on the ready. If anybody's in the field, Kron will take care of him. So I want my Fosh be here and my Bat Chat here. And this is a very odd idea to send somebody down here. Also, my uh, uh, missile launcher is positioned over there. That way, he has shots on this, which is a very prominent camping location. So that's good. And shots here. He, he uh, sends this guy over there for some reason. My homies take him out. So right now, this is my light tank. I think he fired, which means he's lit, but there's a hill in the way. Doesn't matter, I get here, I destroy his thing. I take some shots at him, and now I move up my Fosh B. So the point is, send two people here. Uh, one is one step behind the other. That one will support my bat chat if he gets yoloed. But uh, let's see. I've moved up my heavies to this corner, which means I can move up my mediums to this corner because my mediums, again, will support me if my heavies get ambushed. Funny enough, they both get lit, so I'm not really sure what did that, but... Uh, there you go. So this guy is just hard camping. Like, there's five minutes left of, on this game. Uh, he literally started this game, put everybody here, <laughs> and sent his light to make sure, what, I don't break your camp? Okay. But as soon as homies get over here, they're in a crossfire. So let's just speed it up. So now what's going on is I YOLO'd this guy because um, what I did is I said, okay, he's a one shot, you stay there. 60p, go in, eat the shots, mediums clean up. Worked out pretty well. Well, there you go. Broke his little shit camp. It almost was a draw. So the main, the main way to win is you send some heavies here. Grind out whatever's here until, you know, they give up and camp. And then you send your at least two, I guess, mediums for most people. For me, it's a bat chat and a Fosh B. Down here, all the way through. And then they clear up everybody that's camping here. And that's how you win Siegfried line. Uh, it's the same thing on the other side, too. So, from the other side, I like to put my mediums here, waiting in ambush. Heavy's here, grind out whatever's here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend fighting this corner, it's not fair. They get a hull down, you don't. You could send maybe a Kron here, depending on if you're going to the field or not, but point is, you go to the city, you try grinding them out a little bit. If they don't YOLO the city, you know, because sometimes they immediately YOLO the city, you take your little mediums, or bat chat and Fosh B, and you just break all the way through and go all the way around until you can flank them. Now you got them in a crossfire. So that's how you win Siegfried Line. Okay, so Paris is interesting because the whole thing is a city. So it's pretty straightforward, you know, you just play your heavies through the city. However, it's also quite easy to camp, but it's also quite easy to break the camp. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that. What I do, I send some mediums here. Uh, if the watchtower spots anything, my mediums will shoot them down. And the rest goes into the city, because it's, you know, if they're not camping, there's going to be a big city brawl here. Uh, and if there is a big city brawl here, that's when you move your mediums uh, around and into the middle, right here. Other than that, that's uh, pretty much how you win. But, um, so here, this guy's shit camping, of course. So, for a while, I, I'm waiting, you know, trying to see if this guy's going to YOLO or what is he going to do. I decide, okay, um, he's not going to be pushing this. There's not going to be a big city fight here. So I'm going to move my TVP to this other side over here to support this Progetto. These two are here. These two are here. What they do is uh, 
just covering angles. And I mean, you could tell this guy's gonna camp because he hasn't been lit and he's got watchtowers. Anyway, once the TVP gets to around here... Oh, uh, I jumped the gun a little bit. Where's my bat chat? There it is. My bat chat is scouting. So there's an STB-1 here and a Jagdpanzer 100 there. I was not expecting the Jag to be there, to be honest. So now my homie's going to support me. I'm going to be over here. I'm going to be a scout. This guy gets shot a little bit. He knocks down the tree, which means I'm guessing he's he's driving away, but uh, I don't know that. So now I can tell this guy's hard camping. Okay, let's send the mediums to the middle. And move up everybody in the city. So check this out. This is absolutely obnoxious. There's an S-conk here who's hull down. You know, this guy just really loves camping. Because he sucks ass at this game. So, we gotta dig this guy out. How am I gonna do that? Well, basically to break a camp. Like, look at this... This, uh... Distribution of tanks. It pretty much couldn't be any more perfect than this. Like, batch out here. You got a pair of mediums here, a pair of whatever, and a pair of whatever here, covering every angle. Slowly but surely, we're taking the map from them. My 60 TP. I'm going to use them to side scrape around the corner. There you go. Side scrape around the corner. So this is the part of camps where you're you're grinding them out. You're you're bleeding them, you're making them lose HP. That way you can push them later. But uh so here I am. These two just fired, clipping them out. Ah, this is interesting. So the Yak did run, because he got nuked. I sent my homies to deal with this S Conk. Because I thought the Yag was still over there. So, unfortunately, they get kind of screwed. So, yeah, that was a bit of a waste of a TVP and a Progetto. Doesn't matter, though. I do a bit of a scout run. Uh, I light that guy, so I know that guy's there. I'm going to put him here and go for the reload. And, the again, the goal is to just grind them out HP by HP. This guy... I don't know what his plan was, fighting two autoloaders, but... So yeah, that was pretty pathetic. So I decide, okay, if all their tanks are here, like the s and whatever, that's gonna be a hard camp to break. I'm gonna move everything back to the middle right here. Because I think the easiest way to win is to push this side and get rid of all these. So yeah, now that I see... Oh, okay, there's two mediums here. I have four tanks. Let's shove this. I take the long way so they don't get lit. And then, we go. I'm I'm actually down HP, but it's okay. We got an overmatch here. My flash B nuke someone. There you go. And there you go. Camp defeated. A very hard camp. I mean, look where all his tanks were. It's the most pathetic pussy shit I've seen. But that's how you break camps. This is how you... First, you start the game, you put your tanks in defensive positions, and get a bearing on what's going on. When you determine that they're going to camp, because, you know, you got a watchtower, nothing's been lit, uh, all your tanks are distributed to cover each other, uh, send somebody to scout, I guess. Once you've... All, once you're all in position, for example here, my 60 TP, grinding them out, trying to reduce their HP. Once everybody's HP has been reduced to a sufficient amount, I decided, okay, though there's a weak spot in this camp, and that's pushing over here. So, I gather the remainder of my forces, push through here, destroy their little shit camp. I don't even bother with this thing, it's a waste of my time. That's how you break a shit camp on Paris. And it's the same thing on the other side. I mean, the other side, it's it's identical map, right? You put your mediums here, you can scout if you want. You send your heavies down here. I've seen some people try to... They put, like, all their tanks right here to try and, like, I don't know, 
<laughs> rush, I guess. In reality, you just send all your tanks here and here, cover corners, send one person to cap, you win. This is a long ass video, but so as you may have noticed, um, all right, so for Cliff, you might have noticed that uh, this isn't a 1v1, it's a 1v7. Um, I, I don't know, I don't have any replays of a 1v1 on Cliff, but basically it's the same strat either way. And that strat is, check this out. These fast boys go down to here. These slow boys go to the middle. And the cron goes here. That's the main thing, the cron goes here. For some fucking reason, the cron takes the most retarded path up it, but whatever. The reason you do this, this is literally a clown war strat, by the way. Most of these are clown war strats. This s conk well, chill around this corner. Uh, and the rest goes up. If, uh, if the enemy sends some people down, then, um... So the s conk is around this corner. Uh, this is only for 1v7, because players will go down here, whereas in the 1v1 versus 1, it's not so often. So instead, the, the only difference is the s conk would be up with these guys. Either way, you send some, uh, some homies up over here. And you send some homies up over here. Uh, so as they're coming up, you know, the this is a what pretends a 1v1. As they're coming up this way, these guys shoot them and they get shot in the side here. And that's pretty much it. That's how you win. So like here, there's an E3. Uh, I bounce him because it's an E3. But these guys are over here. They will soon shoot these guys in the side when they cross. In fact, I could have moved these guys to over here and shot the E3 in the side. I just wasn't paying attention. This leopard actually made his way all the way around. That's not really something they would do in a 1v1, because it's isolated and open. But this is basically the lineup, and if you speed it up, this cron farms everybody. The E4 gets a couple of shots in, 60 TP. Same thing with these mediums that are waiting here. So I'll just speed it up, you'll see what happens. Leopard goes to the back. Doesn't matter. Now, these mediums spring into action. To be fair, they could have done this earlier. It's just that in a 1v7 modem, a little more passive, but... Yeah. Go like this. This guy gets uh, farmed. I send a TVP to go cap. So there you go. That's how you win. You send a Kron up here. Alright, this is where he should be. A, b a bunch of big guys, usually high alpha, so they could poke, shoot, and return, and, and go back into cover. And then a bunch of fast mediums and whatever go up here. When he's, you know, when he's telling all his bots... Whoops. When he's telling all his bots to, to uh, you know, go and take these positions, your Kron clips him out, you switch to your homie here in an E4, puts a big shot, you switch to a TVP, he pokes, clips, and you just do that. And that's how you win on uh, Cliff. And it's the same thing from the other side. It really is. Crawling up here, fast or he big heavy here, or TD, and then mediums over here. If they're pr camping particularly hard, you could send some people here, right? Uh, let me make a Cron or a Fosh B here to dig out everybody that would be hiding over here. But other than that, that's how you win Cliff. So, I think that's all the maps, actually. So that's a, that's a one hell of a long video. But uh, hopefully, some of this was useful to you. Uh, the 1v1 mode, by the way, is the most boring mode, because it's the most campy. Soon I'll make videos on 1v7 and 7v1. So, those are much funner. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.